It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. People are always asking me if I know Tyler Durden. I first met Dean not long after my wife and I split up. Hello, my name's Forrest. Forrest Gump. Please, sir, I want some more. Oh, <laughs> hello there. I'm Ryan. This is Ryan Learned Something. This episode, we're going to be talking about storytelling. What makes a good story and why you should be telling good stories. Come with us. Humans love stories. Whether it's old nursery rhymes or it's about the Demogorgon and Eleven, we love to watch these stories and hear stories. Storytelling is such a crucial aspect of most of what we look at as branding nowadays. If you look at the best brands, the reason we like those brands is because they tell an amazing story. So I'm gonna go and learn about oral storytelling, which is like the oldest way we told stories. And then we're gonna take it and look at it through the lens of branding and see how it relates to branding. So come along. Let's hold hands and go learn about storytelling together. Let's talk about storytelling. People have been telling stories ever since people were people. We told them to pass on knowledge, <laughs> to explain things we didn't understand, or simply to entertain each other. And really, not much has changed. We are hardwired to love stories. Our brains have evolved to think in terms of cause and effect, and narratives help us make that connection. One study found that personal stories and gossip make up 65% of our daily conversation. We even tell stories in our sleep. Scientists have long known that stories activate the regions in our brain associated with language. Recent studies have shown that stories activate other regions as well, like the motor cortex when reading about action, or the thalamus when reading about smells, which suggests that when stories feel real, your brain is actually experiencing it as though it is. Whoa. Now we all know the basic structure of a story. The setting, the crisis, the climax, and the resolution. I learned it in third grade. Thanks, Mrs. Woodland. But do you know about prolepsis, anagnorisis, and the eucatastrophe? Did you know a great story is downright addicting? In 2013, 63% of Netflix watchers said they binge watch regularly. And you can bet it's even higher now. Why are shows so bingeable these days? It's simple, serialized storytelling. Before there were DVRs and Netflix, most TV shows had standalone episodes to make syndication easier. But after DVRs and Netflix, more and more shows have complex plots that last entire seasons. It's a trick soap operas and telenovelas have used for decades. Tell big stories in small pieces with lots of drama and plenty of cliffhangers. Brands are using storytelling to get our attention and tap into our emotions which in turn makes us remember them and their products. Remember Dan versus Dave during the 1992 Olympics? Or what about Coke's Mean Joe Green? More recently, Airbnb is telling the story of truly experiencing a new place with their Belong Anywhere campaign. And Patagonia's Don't Buy This Jacket campaign told the story about making the most of what you already have instead of buying the new thing. While Chipotle's somewhat creepy video, The Scarecrow, weaves a tale about real, non-engineered food. The savviest brands are doing more than advertising to us. They're telling us stories about who they are, how they see the world, and how we fit into the story too. Let's hope if they do it well enough, we'll all live happily ever after. I have a little over a week to do a couple of things. I need to learn what goes into a story, come up with a concept for a good story, and then I'm gonna go tell this story at a local event here called The Bee. The theme of the event is grit, so I gotta come up with something that's gritty, I guess. So I've already come up with a pretty good set of resources I'm gonna use. So the three things I wanna learn are, what are the elements of a good story? Why do we tell stories? What techniques can you use to tell the story? And then how do you come up with a good idea for a story? So I'm gonna go try and figure some of this stuff out. So there's an infinite amount of content out there about storytelling. 
You've seen the books that I read. You also saw the tutorial that I took. I also watched a ton of TED Talks. Um, one called The Danger of a Single Story, which is awesome, I totally recommend it. I read a ton of articles, watched some uh, interviews with some of my favorite storytellers, Gary Vee, Casey Neistat, but I couldn't fit all of that in this video, so I built a pathway onto Greed so you can see all of the content that I used to learn for this episode, so check it out. It's in the description below. It was the night before the bee. I'm nervous as crap because I have a story, but I haven't, ha I haven't memorized it yet. I'm hyped on how the story sounds but I don't know if I can memorize it quick enough. So I'm hoping that I can use some sort of memory tricks that I've learned. I've read a few books on memory and I think that I can use a memory palace. I was struggling at first, right? But now I think I've got something that kind of works for the, for the uh, topic of grit, so. I was falling, not the madman, slow motion kind of falling. Oh gosh, see, I can't do this. I can't even read it, so let alone memorize it. I think I'm allergic to memorizing. Let's go see if I can have some grit and fight through this storytelling. I've read through my story maybe 30 times, out loud of course. That's the only way you're supposed to read an oral story. Uh, I think I've got it down pretty good. I'm a little nervous. Also, why is there a dive shop in landlocked Utah? Does anyone figure that one out? I'm going to possibly tell my story if my name gets drawn, which there's a chance that it's not going to. I found out though that there's like 20 people that'll read their stories, so the odds of getting picked just increased. However, I'm hoping there's a ton of people because it's sold out. So I'm here at the B, which is a storytelling festival event being here in Salt Lake City. And I'm gonna put my name in the hat and see if I get drawn out. My only goal is to finish the story. That's it. So let's see how it goes. Going to put my name in the hat. Okay. All right, Salt Lake City, let's do this. Pull the first name and then you Randolph Prophet, you will be our first storyteller of the night. Exactly. So, time. Nervous. Okay, let's do this. Don't be me. Don't be me. Don't be me. Amara Swan, you are the next storyteller. Halfway. So far, haven't been called. Kiss, Mr. Joshua. So there we are at Spaghetti Factory, enjoying our own spaghetti and the Zephra. Mine. Mine. Quick tempt us to win. Ryan Bayless, you will be our next storyteller. So I was the second to last person to be called up. I feel like I'm good with like talking to a camera, but when you stand in front of 300 people, I freak out a little bit. So I'm falling. And this is the Mad Men, isn't the Mad Men slow motion kind of falling. Think the elevator scene from Drive. There's guts and blood and organs just splattered against the mountainside. I'm falling and then I hit the ground. Dead. I'll be honest, I cut it short a little bit, got a little nervous, spaced it. It's hard. Could not be more stoked that that is over. I learned a lot, it was really a cool experience. I just need to find a better story. So I finished my little thing at the B. I wanted to learn more about storytelling and what goes into telling a great story. And so obviously I thought of NPR. We're gonna talk to Guy Raz who hosts the TED Radio Hour, as well as how I built this, and I'm really excited. A little nervous, though. So today I am headed to NPR to interview Guy Raz about storytelling. But first, Mate. This? I haven't really been nervous to do an interview yet until you have to interview an interviewer. Is the TED Radio Hour. From NPR, it's How I Built This, a show about innovators, entrepreneurs, idealists, and the stories behind the movements they built. I'm Guy Raz. I uh, host How I Built This and the TED Radio Hour on NPR. I'm the co-creator of both those shows. I guess if I'm an expert in anything professionally, it's in gathering raw data, gathering raw information, from people, pulling it out of them, and then crafting it into a coherent narrative. We live in a world where access to a platform is, you know, it's gonna sound cliched, but it's a click away. When I started as a journalist, to get on the radio, you had to get, you know, an internship or in the door at some place, and then there had to be some editor who would allow your voice to go on the radio, and then it had to be transmitted and then broadcast. 
But the idea that you don't need anyone's permission, that you don't need an editor or, or tastemaker to say, yes, I anoint you or you can do this. Like you can, you can literally do it on a computer in your basement. And that's, to me, that's the most amazing thing about where we are right now. Like anybody can create content. And you know, of course, the next step is how do you get it out there and how do you, how do people read it? But you start by building it up slowly. You know, maybe five people are reading it, maybe then 15, maybe then 25, maybe you're getting feedback and then it's growing to 500 and until some, some point you've got, you know, 10,000 Instagram followers or whatever it is. So I, I think the, the, the way to start is to just, to just start. I also think that technology is changing so quickly that the way we tell stories will continue to change. I mean, the, the core, the essence, the basic idea of a story has always been the same, whether it's around a campfire or on a podcast. It's pretty straightforward and it's pretty basic. I mean, there are archetypes, right? You know, this is why we, we sort of look to the Bible as the classic example of, 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 of archetypes. The greatest stories ever told, right, are there because it's about love, betrayal, kindness, jealousy, violence. You know, great stories are about human experiences human behaviors um, and common human behaviors. And the same stories happen all the time, all around the world, every day. There are twists and turns in each of those stories, but the basic story is the same. And it's just really the same with what we do. You know, we're, we're talking about human experiences. And with what, what, what I do on our, on our new show, How I Built This, you know, I remember when we were pitching the, the show originally, a lot of people said, well, ah, you know, it's just gonna be the same story about somebody who started a business and you know, the business made it. Like, how is that interesting? But it's like saying, oh, it's another love story. You know, it's another romantic comedy. They're, they're different. You know, there's different twists and turns and there are different nuances and, and details that make each story unique. And so a story is something that we know is familiar to us, but that um, we can connect with as well because of that familiarity. Sort of the technology available to us to help make those stories even more meaningful and to have more impact are just amazing. I mean, think about virtual reality. I think about something Chris Milk said. Chris Milk is an amazing director who has a virtual reality company and he calls them empathy machines. And I was able to experience um, his film through a virtual reality headset called Clouds Over Sidra in which you were taken to a Syrian refugee camp. And after 10 minutes, I was in console. I, I was weeping. I mean, and, and, this ha and this is what happens all the time. You are brought there. You are immersed in this refugee camp and you follow this girl and you see her story and you're, you are changed after that experience. And I think to me, those kinds of methods of storytelling are going to be, they're going to change the way people experience the world. And I think for the better. Good storytelling is, is hard. You know, and, and you, can, you can tell a good story in a movie or in a book or in an article, and it can have uh, great characters and great, um, a great narrative. A great story is rare. And I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a great storyteller. I think occasionally all storytellers hit that moment where they, they, they tell a great story. But a great story is something that stays with you, that, that moves you so much that you, you remember it forever, that it, it's... It's something that is so powerful, it changes you in a way. It's like the golden ticket, you know, the Willy Wonka golden ticket. It happens, it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does happen, you can feel that it, it's something that can have an impact on someone's life. Why else do I do what I do? Like, there is no better answer to that question. Like, that's what I do, what I, that's why I do what I do. So after going and doing the B, and talking to Guy Raz, here's my takeaways about storytelling. Number one, with oral storytelling, it's always great to be passionate about the topic that you're talking about. If you're super passionate about what you're talking about, it comes across in the way you tell the story and how you sound. So all of the stories that we tell follow the same basic structures, whether that's from biblical stories all the way up to modern day blockbusters, but each story has these nuances that make it just a little bit different and more unique. 
And third, technology is changing the way we tell stories. It doesn't necessarily change the structure of the stories, but it's changing the way we interact with stories and how we feel stories. With virtual reality, we're seeing people become more involved in the story. And storytelling is also becoming easier. The tools are becoming cheaper, and so anyone can go out and tell a story. Anyone can go start a YouTube channel, they can start blogging, they can start a podcast. Within that, we're seeing so many more cool stories from people that normally weren't able to tell their story. Everyone has a story to tell, and so if you have a story, go grab a camera, grab your cell phone, do whatever you need to, to go tell that story. Post it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. There's so many platforms and ways that you can tell a story. Just like anything else, the more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you're gonna get and you know, hone your craft. So get out there and do it. If you're a brand or a business that wants to start telling stories, my first piece of advice would be this. Don't tell stories about yourself. Tell stories about your customers and how your product or service improves their life. Make them the hero to make your story successful. So here's what I spent learning about storytelling. Here's a list of the books that I bought. I also watched a few tutorials. I had to buy my tickets to the B, my flights to DC, and our Airbnb in DC. And I also bought a dad hat at NPR. I think it cost me 12 bucks, and I was helping out public radio. Yeah, Michael Bay is a great storyteller if you can talk with explosions and babes. <laughs> what do SoulCycle, Comic-Con, and NASA all have in common? I'll find out in the next episode of Ryan Learned Something.